It can be really tough to anticipate when a buck is going to jump the string and when he's not. Generally here in the Midwest, we haven't had a bad problem with that, or I haven't at least. These deer seem to be a little bit slower to react to the sound. But here recently, over the past few years, I've had a lot more issues with string jumping with these bucks. So now I have to uh, come up with a new strategy on handling shots where the deer is obviously alert. And when you stop them for the shot, they're obviously going to be alert. And sometimes you know, you'll have other situations where the deer are alert without you having to make a sound. Um, under those conditions, you have to aim low. And uh, any shot past 20 yards is what I've learned or, or you know, study in the video. You can see that anything past 20 yards, the deer has time to react to the sound of the shot and drop and start to drop. So a uh, new strategy for me now is to aim about six inches low, roughly on 30 yard shots when the deer is obviously alert. You run a little bit of risk of, of uh, if the deer doesn't drop, you know, that you're going to miss the deer, but they almost always drop at least a little bit. You know, they may not drop the full eight to 10 inches, but you know, even if they drop a few inches and you're holding six inches low, you're going to have a good vital hit. So those are some of the things I've learned uh, or, or lessons that I've had reinforced with this buck that I killed last week. It's always good to take something away. You know, you always have to learn, you know, this game of hunting whitetails is, uh, is a challenging one and we need to learn every, every chance we can whenever something goes wrong and even when something goes right, it's good to sit down and analyze it and figure out, you know, uh, what you can learn from the situation.